Over the past month or so, this 5140 has seen a lot of changes. Welcome to Envision Prototypes, I'm Nick. From dropping the body down over the G35 chassis, to chopping the roof, to a whole bunch of stuff in between, to now working on these front wheel arches. Since the front sits a lot lower, we have to take, tires are actually rubbing on this lip here, and they're a little bit small. So we have to take and re-arch them, bring them up a little bit higher to give the tires enough clearance so when you turn your wheels, they don't bind up. That's not good. Initially, I had the bottom edge of the fender lip sitting up here, and I felt that this area was a bit too thin. So dropped it down three quarters of an inch, we'll add another three quarters for a flange, cut it off on the bottom three quarter line, and roll it. If we feel this arch is still too tight, we can always move up on it. It's a lot easier than recreating a whole new arch and welding in missing material. Then once this is done, we can take the front end, blow it off, and final weld all these areas, finish the structure that's up inside here because it's missing from here down, and then hopefully get it back on the car. Let's see how it goes. We still have the inner structure to create for the inside, for the fender to bolt to. So I'm running both sides at the same time. If I do something on one fender a certain way today, and I wait till the next weekend to do the other side, well, I kind of forget what, you know, what I did and how I did it, uh, believe it or not. So while I'm running one side, the other side's running in parallel. I figured the car can hold the fender while we're working on the arch. So let's get some masking tape out. We left plenty of material when we made the patch panels so that we could kind of figure out where the arch is gonna look good. Right there. Tape has a tendency to move around or become unstuck as you're cutting or whatever. Oops. Like that. All right. Now I started playing with this front lip here initially, just rolling it back so I can figure out where the bolt location would be comfortable. You gotta be able to get a socket in from the headlight area to bolt this bottom fascia on. So with this new arch created, we can now go ahead and cut off that fender along that red line. This is the easy part, cutting it off. <clears throat> Rolling it can be a little more tricky. You can see it's been pretty battered. Not too bad through there, but these areas have been, either somebody picked the car up by that, who knows. And what we gotta figure out, we gotta remark this, is how large of a radius we want for this fender lip. Larger radius is stronger, but it looks kind of strange. I think a tighter radius would fit the proportions of the car a little better. So, I've got a number of different dollies. We've got one with a pretty large dam, or I think it's half inch, and this one's about three eighths. And the back one's a fairly tight radius. The front one, let's run with this dolly, because you can see, we've also got a curve develop in this. Uh, it's for creating wheel arches that are a little more rounder than this one. Then you have your traditional dollies, but I find that this distributes my roll over a larger area, so. Corners have been rounded off so they don't dig in. So let's start rolling. Yeah, we want the arch to fit, or the dolly to fit the arch. The other thing is the car, uh oh. The car is actually holding the fender for us. So it makes things easier than trying to work on a bench. There goes my tack. I can fix that with a vice grip.
Try this again. Now, when I'm rolling this, I don't actually see where the dolly is. I kind of line it to where I think it's got to be, but I'm watching what the metal does. If I see the metal rolling over too far back, I move the dolly towards me. If I find it's not rolling enough, I move the dolly back. It's a matter of feel. The more you work with it, the, the better you get at it. And the other thing is, I don't try and roll the whole thing over at one shot. I'm going to work it around gradually. It'll take me a few minutes, but back and forth, eventually it'll get to, the, to that point. We're actually taking the metal and we're stretching it inward. See it stiffen up as I rolled it past, say I think about 30 degrees. It's not quite 45, but right away things started to stiffen up. You gotta be comfortable when you're hammering. If you're uncomfortable, your hammer strikes aren't gonna be very precise. Now this bottom portion here, I need a tighter dolly to get that radius right because otherwise I'll create a bunch of marks with that longer rod. Now, I'm not sure if you guys can see from back there, but the bottom edge of the fender, the front edge here, actually dipped down. By rolling that flange in, it straightened the panel out. So we have to create a bunch of little small tucks, and that'll bring it back up. And I've got a special tucking tool here. It basically, takes some sheet metal, pushes it into a little divot, and it's an old pair of vice grips that I modified. Alright, 
So we can take care of that on the bench. Take care of the little tucks, smooth them out. This wheel arch doesn't look too bad. A little bit of something going on there. I have to bring that up. In the meantime, I'm going to get another arm. Take all this off. Now I'm gonna get the wheel and throw it on here. There we go. Let's leave that there for now. We're not dropping the car down because I still have to do the other side, but I wanted to keep the original arch because it matches front to back to do a circle, like an arc, a round arc around the wheel. Um, it didn't look right. So we thin this out, kept the flat top. She's gonna come down probably about three inches. So that's just gonna be near the top of that tire. So this is the original one. And you can see how much of a difference I made. Now, before throwing this out, this is gonna be my template for the other side. I'll mark it out, cut it, roll it, just like this side. And then we should be done with those arches. See that light in the front end up a lot. By opening up that arch, the wheel arch a bit, things look less bulky up here. Things look different when you step back further, like you guys are. So perhaps you can uh, put it down in the comments. Let me know if that was a good move or not. We might end up making a video on creating fender arches. Before we pull the hood off, I'm gonna show you what's happening over here. Now that was the original core support there. That, unfortunately, we can't use. The shape is wrong, and we're not gonna work with that single latch for the hood. Uh, they had a tendency to pop open. They can just utilize the two we have from the infinity. They're down inside. We'll show that when the hood comes up. So we can lose the hood now. All right, so here we go. We've got this template that represents the inner fender support, which is the part that's gonna go in through here. There's a series of fasteners going to go in, attach this fender to the Infinity's chassis. Because right now it's, it's kind of floating around. Uh, this structural piece is going to be gone. And then we're going to create, it's just a piece of card of what I was playing with, a new kind of cover that covers up all this and keeps the air flowing through the rad. If this went up that way, uh, it wouldn't cool the rad properly. So we have to create a piece that's going to sit kind of like this and it's gonna direct, keep the air directed towards the rad. This is gonna be fabricated later. What we're gonna to do today is create these pieces, which are gonna flow into those hinge brackets that my dad's been working on. This set of hinges that we're gonna be installing. Those aren't infinity hinges, they're from something else. He found something that's gonna work out quite well over there. My job is to create these pieces out of 18 gauge to flow into those brackets. There's a few fasteners here we have to leave an access hole is to be taken and rolled inward. And then this will be taken and mounted in there, just like that. And ooh, it's running away. And that's gonna blend in to this bracket here. Let's get this transferred to some sheet metal and start forming it up. And both sides, are, I believe, are identical. Let's double check. All we're gonna do is just roll this top flange. The bottom one doesn't matter at the moment. And as you can see, this little tail is gonna Go in through here. These are the hood latches, by the way, for the Infinity's hood, old hood. We're going to take and create mounts on the underside of the 51's hood to pick these up. Yeah. So that's going to work out quite well. Notch both sides because there's also a bracket that gets fastened to the front inner well, inner fender well. And I think keep things neat. Both of these flanges are gonna to roll towards the outside of the car instead of in, so you have a nice smooth edge that mates up with the Infinity's body. A little bit easier to weld it from the top side, from the inside, because we've kind of located, but all we'll do is put a couple little tacks that can be ground down, smooth out later, 
just to hold this in place. We take the fenders off, we'll get in from the outside and do our permanent welds that way. This thing is gone. It's... Yeah, we could have notched it and whatever, but the more I got looking at this latch, the less I liked it. There was no, unless you put like a cable or, or a safety, there's a chance that this latch could pop open, you hit a bump, hood flies up, messes up your, messes up your day. So we have our template here. I'm leaving a little bit extra because I'm not sure what's gonna happen with the front there. I'd sooner not uh, cut it off and have to add it later. I'm gonna do something like this. And since both are identical, we'll make two. Now, I'm gonna cut one out, flip it, mark this out, so we have two identical pieces. This line here has a specific curve, not the red ones, but the crease has a specific curve that matches the line on the fenders for the flange. So I'm going to cut off on this crease, which you probably can't see, and retrace everything again. Not too worried about the holes because we can drill those later. And this bottom edge, again, has a specific curve, which will be done after. So this is front, rear, driver's side. Line this up like that. This line on the template doesn't match what I cut out, but that's okay. We have a little bit of freedom to do what we want there. It's just an access hole. Uh, we're gonna be bending it the other way. I should bend it this way. So driver's side again, just different orientation because we're gonna put this through the tipping wheel and create that curve. And now with that line created, we can take and cut off this bottom 3 8 flange that we have to create on the final piece. I need the exact curve done. And that's going to be created uh, which side? Same side. They both curve towards the outside of the car. It's fine there. Let's see how the flat lower uh, wheel does with 18 gauge. I may have to switch it out to one with a V. That's not bad. Now, this is a very subtle curve. But we have to follow it precisely, otherwise our bolting flange is going to throw the way the fender sits on the car. happening. Nice flange. We're going to take, probably trim this down just a little bit or take and roll it down so we don't have a sharp edge sticking up. It'll add strength to our panel as well. Now for the bottom, we need to create that smaller flange. 
Yeah, you see, I'll throw in a different style of lower. Give me a little more mechanical advantage to bend this over. So this one has a bit sharper V in it, so I can push the panel through. The skateboard wheel itself does all the work. Poor wheel. That's all we're going to get out of it. A little bit of a start. That's okay. We'll use a hammer and dolly, and or hammer and vice in this case, and take it over the final 85 degrees. And there we go. Now, for those of you guys who have fancy tools, whatever, reciprocating hammers, planishing hammers, yeah, go ahead and use them. But for those that don't have them, you can use basic tools to get a lot of your stuff done. And for the other stuff, you can kind of improvise. We're going to leave that because it's going to flow down into the uh, core support area. The other hammer was too wide of a face to get in and do that radius nicely. Before I was allowed to use the power tools, I had to do things manually. Uh, I was a little too short to reach up and actually uh, work the workstations. A little bit of something there. Let's take a slapper. Clean it up. There we go. So that follows the contour of the top of the fender, the, uh, the infinity. And this we're going to have to take and maybe curve it a little bit to match up with the 51. Once we have the shape we want, we'll take and roll that down just a little bit. And then it'll stiffen that edge up. Let's go see how it looks. Now, unlike cardboard, this might be a little bit tricky to squeeze into here. Uh, first, let's check the curve. So we need to take and stretch this edge because it doesn't follow the curve of the fender. Okay, quick pass in the kick shrinker. And we have way too much curvature. Wow. Doesn't take much. Okay, I've also started the dog leg for this area down in here. Okay, we're rocking on something. Looking good though. Yeah, we're a little bit long at the back. I have to make a few little adjustments. I think I'll bring you guys in. Okay, 5.321 hours later, this piece has been in a number of times. I've taken the dog leg I created here, flattened it back out, made a little adjustment at the back, and hopefully, oh, and for all the Ford purists out there, I'm really sorry, I had to cut one of these bolting flanges off in this location. It's interfering, so it had to go. Hey, it's a custom car. We can make a few changes, right? Now to wiggle. Come on. Okay, 
wiggle this in here, get rid of this shaving. Um, there, it just fell into place. This has to come out, move back. And I'm just aligning my holes with the marks, and that's it. So, took a few minutes of finagling, but we got this piece fabricated, allowing us access to get at those two bolts for this breather bracket. I don't think you'll ever need to change them, but uh, uh, you never know. And there's a relay here, plenty of room for that. This will get welded to the strut, to the bracket, clamped here, and that's it. The only thing we have to do is roll that leg up a little bit as a strengthener. One more time. Then we have the other side to do. All right, so all we did was just tip it just a little bit. That's all you need. You don't have to roll it all the way over, hem it, all that stuff. It's just a small stiffening rib, and that's it. So now we can go ahead, clamp it, get some screws in this, and this will be done. Now to the other side. It probably won't fit now. Like a glove. Perfect. We still retain the bumper for the hood. We have to replace the grommet because it's like a chunk of plastic. It's so hard now. So let's get a couple screws in here. Fenders lined up at the back. Everything's clamped at the front where it has to be. So this will locate the fenders now every single time. We will have adjustability. They'll have, we'll have little box nuts welded to the back side of this 18 gauge panel. So we can do have some adjustability, but for the most part, it's not going to be going anywhere. Done. So that blends right in. We can roll that down if we want to. Streamline that. We will have to cap the top there because I don't want to see down inside. So that'll be another little piece there. All right guys, so we got the two inner fender structural pieces created, installed. I have to go in, tack them in a couple of spots on the engine side. When we take the fenders off, I'll do the final welds, get those flanges welded to the Infinity's chassis, and then those will be solid enough that we can actually start bolting this fre these fenders on and off without things moving around. So that's gonna be it for this video. We got the wheel arches reshaped. They're looking really good now. Uh, look a lot better when we drop the car. But overall, I think we're really shaping up nicely with this project. Next time, I'll show you how we go about recreating these structures for the fender heels. That's what came off these fenders. And obviously we can't put them back, we can't reuse that. So I'll show you Nice way of creating new ones so we can get the bottoms pinned on more than just a screw. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button. It helps us out a lot. Catch you the next one, guys.